Hello, my name is Nigel Clegg and we've come here to the Irish Osmosis Centre to show how to use the Tramex Skip and Moisture Meter on a glass fibre boat. But first, why is taking moisture readings so important? Experience has shown that high moisture readings are associated with an increased risk of osmosis or gel coat blistering, otherwise known as boat pox in the USA. Osmosis is caused by hygroscopic solutes that are trapped in the laminate and these absorb and retain moisture from the environment. Regular checks with a moisture meter will show whether moisture is being absorbed and retained by the laminate. Persistently high readings over a period of several weeks could indicate an osmotic condition. Moisture meters are very easy to operate with regular use, owners can chart the condition of their boats from one season to the next, avoiding nasty surprises. A moisture meter is also a good investment when buying a second-hand boat, when it can be used to check over potential yachts before engaging a surveyor. So how do we use a moisture meter? The Tramex Skipper Plus is easy to use and provides a quick, accurate and non-destructive check for retained moisture. However, moisture meters are not foolproof and they cannot discriminate between different types of water. So we must try to eliminate extraneous moisture before we take any readings. The first job then is to pressure wash the hull with fresh water to remove weed, slime and salt, as these will all retain moisture. A clean hull will also be much easier to examine. If you are looking for blisters, this is the best time to see them whilst the hull is still wet and before any blisters have had time to shrink. Once the boat has been blocked up safely ashore, allow her to dry before taking any readings. Also, make sure the bilges are dry and well ventilated as bilge water and condensation will give high readings. So choose a dry day if at all possible. Newer boats, built from the mid-1990s onwards, should dry quickly, so moisture readings can often be taken within an hour of lifting. But older boats, and boats coated with epoxies such as International Gel Shield, will often give high readings for several weeks after lifting. When the boat is ready, set the Skipper Plus to range 2 for GRP, and start taking readings at the port bow firstly on the hull top sides and then work down towards the center line. Repeat this every 18 inches or half a meter along the length of the boat before starting on the opposite side and make a note of readings as you go along. When you have finished you should have a table looking something like this. Readings lower than about 14% or in the green are ideal and show that the laminate is dry. If you can, this would be a good time to protect your boat with some epoxy. Slightly higher readings, up to about 18 or 20%, might be found if the boat has just been lifted and are no cause for alarm, but the hull should be allowed to dry out before considering any epoxy treatment. Readings above 20% might indicate a problem in the laminate or could be caused by bilge water and condensation. If the laminate has started to become osmotic, there is not much that can be done at this stage, but wintering ashore will delay the need for a full treatment. Sandwich structures are light in weight and can be immensely stiff, but their core materials are easily damaged by water ingress and are quickly reduced to a mush. Repairs can soon become uneconomic, so time is of the essence. So where will we find cord layup? Most deck mouldings are cord to save weight and are easily compromised by holes drilled to mount fittings and for electric cables. Some holes are cord as well, usually above the waterline, but sometimes below the waterline too. 
catamaran holes are nearly always cored throughout. The skipper meter will easily find moisture in core materials, but it is sometimes difficult to know whether it is the core which is wet or just the outer skin. If in doubt, readings taken from corresponding locations inside the hull will provide an easy double check.